With rapid progress and public uptake, it's an exciting time for artificial intelligence research. But not all languages and not all people are included in this progress. We decided to work together to fix this. Merhabalar, ben Ahmet. Seki ve Sema, ona var da Stevedas. Oi, eu sou a Luísa. Eu moro no Reino Unido, mas eu sou brasileira. Namaste, meu nome é Daniel Souza. My Arab or Michigan Manatown. I am based in Toronto, Canada, and I speak English. Hi, Joga. This is Somalia. I am India. I am a very happy and happy to be here in the city of Lucknow. I am in Amsterdam, but I am Iranian. There are approximately 1.9 million Irish speakers. There's more than 16 million population talking single language. There are 41 million speakers for the Yoruba language. There are 260 million speakers of Portuguese. And we have over 3,000 collaborators across 119 countries who speak 101 languages, working together to unlock multilingual generative AI. This is Aya. This is really special time for AI progress because now as a broad community, we uncover how to interact with machines. More and more people are uh, getting involved, communicating, using these models. People like my, my mom who wouldn't really use uh, AI models before can now use them. The true breakthrough of it is that it makes creating information far easier. You can generate an email, you can experiment and iterate on how you communicate. But a vast amount of people, because of their language, cannot access these capabilities, which is really a big failure for the AI technologies. Uh, the available resources for languages in the world is not distributed equally. English dominates in part because some of these breakthroughs have related to the internet. When you talk about the internet, right? For example, I think um, about 60% of it um, is in English, right? And only 25% of the user base actually speaks the language. And when you go down the list, you find that the top 10 languages um, cover almost 75% of it. So what that means is that there's 25% of users that are in these lower source languages that don't have the kind of opportunities that all of us just take for granted. So while only a fraction of households speak English, the internet is dominated by English. Most of the uh, data sets that we use to train multilingual models, or many of them, have been collected in English by you know, American or Europeans and then translated into other languages. And so they're talking about the Super Bowl, they're talking about you know, American pop culture, and that's how we train these models often to reflect those sort of concepts, not sort of the the actual native uh, concepts and, and sort of cultural heritage that are in these individual places. The reality is that many languages across the world are at threat of extinction. This problem could ultimately be exacerbated by the fact that the current state of the art models only support just a handful of the languages spoken across the world. I did my um, high school studies up until high school in my mother tongue, single language. So there were a lot of numerous barriers when I wanted to get to know about our knowledge when I googled something in my own language. More people in Somali right now face the challenge of the language. More people can't be self-taught because many resources are online are English. Um, so well, people face the language barrier. So for those that communicate outside of English, it becomes harder to, to communicate. What it means is that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. 
In January 2023, collaborators across the Cohere for AI open science community got together to address this massive disparity and work towards a new, state-of-the-art, open-source, multilingual dataset and model. Without a clear way forward or confidence we would be able to coordinate a collaboration this diverse, we set out to tackle the problem, giving ourselves one year to make significant improvements in multilingual AI and ensure that technological progress is accessible to people around the world. AI is a chance to build something that does not exist yet. If we want to ensure that everyone can reap the benefits of AI, we need to build technology that can be leveraged by all people, uh, regardless of the language that they speak. I'd like to live in a future where it is not just a small number of large companies and well-funded institutes that are able to build and steer future technologies. It is very important for consumers and people building applications to continue to have access to high quality open source options. With these shared beliefs and optimism for a more inclusive future, we established some central goals. Aya is committed to training a model that serves 101 languages, collecting and releasing a data set, so owned by the, all the people who contributed to it. Also, we're committed to having a really meaningful conversation about some of the limitations of these models. There's a study of how research happens, and it's very interesting because multi-institutional collaborations are a lot more rare, but tend to lead to um, a higher propensity for breakthroughs. And that's because when you bring people together who are not from the same institution, you kind of break existing patterns of collaboration. And you, people are able to observe how others think about research and inspect ideas and stress test. We organized ourselves around this philosophy of collaboration and got to work. 50 people came to the project intro meeting and 70 more responded to our call for collaborators. We had a lot of enthusiasm, but little coordination. So in February, we kicked off three teams to focus our efforts. First up, we needed an online user interface through which examples of the languages we were collecting could be written out and edited by native speakers around the world. Uh, I am a member of the UI team, and our goal is to build a web UI and annotation tool uh, with a goal of making it easy and accessible for people to contribute to the AYA project. Textual examples collected from collaborators worldwide were then sent to our data team, who tokenized them, converting them to data usable by a language model. Uh, our main goal was to uh, have as uh, much diversity and inclusivity as we can with the tasks that we cover, as well as with the languages. And then transform them into data sets that can help build these kind of um, multilingual uh, generative models. Finally, the benchmarking and fine-tuning team uses the data to train the model. I'm the co-lead of the benchmarking and fine-tuning team. And what that means is that we train the models and all the data that's collected by all the amazing ambassadors and contributors. And then we evaluate the performance of those models and their different capabilities across languages and tasks to understand how they've improved. The teams were collaborating steadily towards their goals, but by summer 2023, it was clear the project would not be without its challenges. Our UI was not pulling in nearly enough data to train a model. This project's so much harder than I ever thought it was gonna be. And I think that's probably true for most of us working on it. It turns out it's incredibly ambitious to try to connect with speakers of 101 languages around the world. I think a lot of us, we work in the English domain. So the problems that we talk about are usually data quality. We rarely ever suffer from data scarcity. And um, I think with Aya, 
da data scarcity is the primary problem here, right? We don't have good data for these rare and low, low resource languages. So we're trying to solve that there. Trying to communicate what we are looking for for each of these languages and each of these data sets to the uh, volunteers. That process has been more challenging than we uh, originally expected. With the lack of data coming in, we were confronted by how deeply intertwined language is with the culture it reflects. We would have to fundamentally reimagine how research is done. And so we launched a fourth team to help us connect with more collaborators worldwide. My role in IF project is as the Europe region lead. Region and lead for Asia. Latin regional lead. I am one of the Somali ambassadors. Singhal ambassador for the project. My main role in AYA has been as the Irish language ambassador. In my role, my job is to spread the word about AYA and gather new contributors for the Irish language, and also to support Irish contributors to participate in AYA. This has involved people from civil society, from industry labs, from academic labs. Students for high school or can be someone that has a master on a specific thing on NLP or even in linguistics. With the help of six regional leads and 50 language ambassadors, organizing outreach and communicating the goals of AYA to their communities, we started to see an uptick in linguistic data coming in. With this spike, a new challenge came to the forefront. The main challenge there is that we really cannot have a universal way of addressing different languages the same way, in, both in terms of how we are collecting the data what is in that data, uh, how we can uh, use that data in a responsible way. So we launched the responsibility team to ensure our data was safe, free of bias and toxicity, and that we were able to communicate transparently about the model's limitations. As summer turned to fall, we were still a long way from having the quantities and quality of data needed to train a new state-of-the-art open source multilingual model. It was time to get creative. So we started a competition between Portuguese and Spanish. It lasted for like a week and it was a huge success. Both languages had more than two times the amount of contributions they had in the beginning of the competition by the end. I am also fortunate to have a really great pool of language ambassadors and some of them kind of go above and beyond in terms of putting together little graphs that are like showing that we're trying to climb this big mountain uh, of contributions for our languages but uh, and we're making progress each day we led a recipe challenge. I got to try an Irish crisp sandwich while a contributor from Ireland tried Persian eggplant dip. And we created a community playlist, shared pictures from our different corners of the world, led social calls. We were also making sure that our contributions were strong by sharing examples of strong task contributions. So we had a high quality and quantity of data coming in. And I really think that was because of how engaged our community members were. This new focus on community and a data-centric approach put us on the final push to the finish line. We now had the data needed to push the boundary on open source multilingual AI. I remember the night we reached the goal, I was kind of sick, but the moment I saw the, you know, the numbers and that we reached the goal, I was feeling better afterward, to be honest. That was, I think that felt great. AYA takes a real step forward in improving the state of the art performance for historically underrepresented languages. We've done really interesting technical things with how we've trained our models and the state of art. They impress us. And that for me is also really important that we've achieved this technical excellence while also creating this revolution, how people collaborate. AYA signifies a crucial technical milestone, but it is just one piece of the puzzle. Multilingual technology has been systemically underrepresented in breakthroughs. While the release of AYA marks an important step forward, 
It is merely a band-aid solution for the significant disparity in how diverse languages have been treated in the tech sector. At its core, AYA has also been a revolution bringing together collaborators from around the world who will continue to collaborate beyond a single research paper or model. It is amazing to see how we've pulled together this community of close to 3,000 people uh, who have like come together to build this quest of a time data set. So many people from so many different backgrounds to work together uh, and not just work because there's a passing interest, but like passionately dedicate a ton of time to these things. Aya's creation is only a step in the journey towards changing the world, towards making technology truly democratic, having its benefits felt by people from everywhere. I can't even imagine how that's going to help our education system and, uh, and how, how it's going to help businesses and how it's going to help even engineers uh, build more startups that, that are only possible because, because such uh, technology exists. So I think it's the way to open, you know, a big a gate basically for our Somali, for our Somali community. And I think it's going to be a good thing. If people taking our model and doing more fine tuning, doing more research on that and improving capabilities even more than what we do, what we are doing at the moment. This will be really a moment, a moment that we say, okay, we made the impact in AI research landscape. After seeing the benefits of our data and, and models, I hope that even more people will join as annotators and contribute to AI mission in the future. If we can gather this many people together doing one thing, I, I don't know, don't even know what we cannot do with all this effort from people that are so different and putting their time on this. It's just incredible. I is gonna change the game. I mean, we're releasing everything open source and I think this is key to the project. We want people to build off what we've started. We want people to take the data set and the model and run with it and use it to bring access to people in their community, to build tools that will support people in their neighborhood. And it will be very exciting to welcome a whole new group of players to the scene and welcome new people to be building this technology, solving problems that are local to them. And it's now game on. It's in your hands. So let's see what you do with it. <laughs>